today's topic is about the chimney swift. This bird right behind me. One of the coolest birds there are in North America. So many unique things about this bird. Um, if you saw my uh, little post yesterday about today's uh, the topic, I said I called them, you know, nature's bug zapper or the avian bug zapper. Um, these birds consume large amounts of flying insects. Consider one of the most beneficial birds in North America. And one of the, uh, the types of insects they eat a lot of are actually mosquitoes. And yes, uh, you know, purple martins get a great, a great deal of undeserved notoriety when it comes to uh, mosquitoes. They really don't eat very many. Scientifically, it's been proven that less than 5% of their diet is mosquitoes. But chimney swifts do eat a lot of them because primarily they're diurnal hunters. That means that, you know, they, and they, they feed a lot in the morning and a lot in the evening, and that's when mosquitoes are very, very active. And these guys just uh, open their mouths and, and just to take them right in. So uh, chimney swifts are very, very cool birds. Now, where does the name chimney come from? Well, in pre-settlement times uh, in this country, these birds nested in big uh, hollow trees, you know, trees that had broken off and it created a big deep hollow uh, cavity in there and they would nest in there and they would nest in cave walls and cliff faces under and crevices and things like that. These birds, their wings are so long that when they fold their wings, their, their wings stick so far behind their tail, they can't sit on perches and they can't uh, walk around on the ground. They're, they're not built for that. They live almost their entire life in the air, uh, you know, when they're roosting at night. And they're very much like bats in that sense, and that they cling to the sides of rough surfaces. And so, you know, those, those old wooden cavities are, and caves and things like that. Well, two things happen. When uh, settlement happened in North America, the European settlers especially started building chimneys, and, uh, houses with stone and uh, stone chimneys, and they were also cutting down these, these hollow trees uh, and, and clearing forests and things like that. So they were destroying habitat for the chimney swifts. At the same time, they were creating habitat for them. So they were building all of these stone chimneys and brick chimneys and rough ones. And so these birds found homes nesting inside of these, these chimneys. And they, only one pair will nest in one chimney. And so they, the more chimneys, you know, popped up. Well, what's happened now? The inspiration for this, uh, this program today, it was uh, this video that I shot. Um, it, it, I posted this yesterday, but this is a video that I shot in South Carolina when I was down there. Um, notice the stone chimney here. Uh, watch what's happening. I don't know if Matthew can zoom in a little bit, but you see these black specks flying around and all of a sudden they start zipping into that chimney. It's almost like the chimney is sucking them in and drawing them in there. Uh, this is not nesting. This is migration. And these birds, there's probably, I don't know, a hundred or so of them roosting in that chimney for the night. Uh, and they, they do this and you can see this in mass numbers. Uh, they, there can be dozens, there can be hundreds, there can even be thousands of these chimney swifts in my groups anymore. A big chimney uh, on an old school that's not being used, things like that. Uh, and even this time of year, there's, they're not being used, as you say, you know, with, with the heat and fire. So these chimneys are great for them this time of year uh, for nesting and also for migration. Now in the winter here, which is great because they couldn't use them in, in that time, but these chimneys are really important to these birds, and especially in migration. Now, the, oh, let's go back the other way. I want to show you. Now, there's a picture of thousands of them nesting in a big smokestack. Uh, not nesting, roosting in there uh, in migration. We've seen, I've seen this before in huge numbers. And when we talked about them nesting, yes, you can see how the rough, this is a brick fireplace on the inside. They take small sticks and they use glands inside of their mouth, their saliva glands, to basically glue these small sticks together and glue them to the side of that structure and then they lay their eggs on them and they uh, this is very typical three to four eggs in a nest uh, but only one pair uh, in a, a structure versus the roosting that's going on right now in fall migration you know, I saw several of them uh, in the area this week and they twitter and they chitter as they, as they fly around I call them flying cigars to me they look like a cigar with wings 
very sickle-like wings and they have really fast, shallow, uh, fluttery wing beat. Um, they fly around up high and they zip down low and they fly up high again. Just a great, great, great bird. Now, their numbers have been decreasing dramatically over the years. And what the main reason they've been dramatic now decreasing again is two things. One, people with these natural stone uh, and brick fireplaces are capping them. They're putting on uh, a chimney caps on top of them, to ca mostly to keep raccoons out, things like that. Uh, and, the, and the chimney swifts can't get in them for their nesting or their roosting. And the other thing is new construction of chimneys. They're made of a metal pipe inside of mainly a wooden structure. And the metal pipes are too slick that the birds can't get their nest to stick on the side of them. So they're losing nesting habitat and roosting habitat. And people ask, you know, well, how can I help? Well, uh, there's a great organization, uh, ChimneySwift.org, and there's other groups that are trying to help them and raise awareness. One is if you have a chimney cap, take it off during the nesting season. And, and then have, you can have it on all fall and winter and very early spring, but from about mid-April on until now, you know, leave those chimney caps off if you can so they can actually use it. Um, you, they, by far, that's the easiest. Now, when you go to buy, build a chimney, there's not a lot you can do. We know your house construction. Um, if, you, if you have the choice of building a natural fireplace, yeah, that's great. You get in a natural chimney, that's wonderful. Most people don't have that, but you can build like Ruth did. This is in Ruth's yard. This is a chimney swift tower that you can build and, and, and rough wood is good for them to cling to as well, not just not just brick or stone. So you can build one of these in your yard. Again, this is a lot. This is a big nest box because only one pair is going to nest in here and that's a lot bigger than a bluebird house as you can imagine. So if you're willing to do that, that's something you can do. And there are plans for that on the internet, especially at uh, chimneyswift.org. So um, that, these are some of the ways you can work. Now, the last question I had is, is from the guy who was standing outside watching me, uh, watching me film these guys, and he said, oh, those are barn swallows. And I said, no, nope, those are not barn swallows. Those are chimney swifts. So I want to make sure we clarify, this is a barn swallow. And there's how they, they build these mud nests usually underneath your eave, you know, maybe on your front porch, really up close to the, to the ceiling, and they... The nest is, you know, uh, right really close up there, and they have their babies, and they fly around. Are they the ones who follow you around when you're mowing the grass and eat the bugs flying up behind you? Not a chimney swift. This is the barn swallow. We've done programs on these before. So uh, chimney swifts, absolutely fantastic animals. Um, a great topic for a program. So if you like the programs, please give them a share. Please give them a, a, a like. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Uh, send in ideas for future programs. And until then, come by and let's talk birds.